Today we're going to talk about some life history strategies, and life history strategy is basically the way that a species uh, positions itself to pass on its genes. We've already talked about R-selected and K-selected species before, but we can talk about them not just in terms of the graph, but we can talk about them in how they try to grow their populations. So this can be how many offspring they produce over their lifetime, number of times they can try and reproduce, the age they hit sexual maturity, and how long they're going to live. It can also be things like how literally big is the organism. They can be very good indicators. So as we talk about the R-selected and K-selected strategies, do remember that not every organism will have all the traits. A really good example is mice. Mice are an excellent example of an R-selected species. They're small, they have uh, short lifespans, they hit sexual maturity really fast, their gestation period is really short. Some mice are only pregnant for 14 days and they produce fairly large litters. Those are all our selected traits, but they reproduce sexually, which is a K-selected trait. So you will sometimes see mixing and matching. Aphids can produce sexually and asexually. What does that mean? Well, they are our selected because we know that they reproduce a lot and they don't really care about their offspring. Those are our selected traits. So you've got to take a holistic approach to all of these organisms. Uh, octopi, we would tend to think that, you know, they're invertebrates, they have short lifespans, they probably are our selected, but they actually have a lot of K-selected traits too. They put literally so much effort into caring for their eggs that the mothers starve to death. They have a lot of our selected traits, but they can be viewed through a K-selected lens too. So don't put these as these are hard and fast. You have to be all one or all the other. There can be some mixing and matching. Just take a holistic approach and see which one is more characteristic. So with that disclaimer out of the way, our selected organisms are organisms with high growth rate and a J-shaped curve. These organisms, because they're focused on growth rate, tend to produce lots and lots and lots of offspring. Um, there are some that produce multiple times over their lifespan, but there are many that only get to reproduce once. So they put all of their effort into a single reproduction and if you're some species of insects, that can mean hundreds, if not thousands, of eggs laid in a single go. They tend to have a very small size, so it doesn't take that long for them to grow to full size and reach sexual maturity. They have uh, high growth rates, which is their most characteristic trait. They, uh, the rep or asexual reproduction is a pretty much dead giveaway of an R-selected reproductive strategy. Uh, they reach maturity very early, they have short lifespans, they have very high early mortality. Uh, infanthood and childhood are not safe things in nature. They're pretty dangerous for people too, but we're pretty good at getting around that. But we're also case selected, so we would be. Um, but for our selected organisms, there's a massive die-off of infants and young. But it still works because they've, repro they've produced so many offspring that it doesn't really matter. They don't put a lot of effort into their individual offspring because there's a high chance they're going to die. But there's so many offspring produced in a single go that some of them will survive, even if it's only one or two in the end. And there's a tendency that these organisms live in an unstable environment, because that it, reproductively, not ethically, but reproductively, it makes sense to produce a lot of offspring and don't put a lot of effort into them if your environment's unstable, because they might die very easily and then all of that energy is wasted. Just make a lot of them and hope for the best. 
a K-selected species is not selected for growth, but it's actually selected to maximize carrying capacity. So it has a slower growth rate and it has those S-shaped logistical curves. These organisms have fewer offspring. They tend to be physically larger. Think things like whales, elephants, humans are relatively big compared to other organisms, uh, lions, wolves. Those are large organisms. They tend to have a lower growth rate in terms of population size, but also they develop more slowly as well. Like an elephant, a Galapagos tortoise, human, all have long uh, lifespans, but they also grow fairly slowly. Like elephants are pregnant for 22 months. Literally, it takes them a long time to develop. And you wouldn't want to have that long developmental time where you put lots of energy into the young if most of them are going to die off. So what happens is that behaviorally, K-selected species put a lot of care into their young. They also put lots of energy into their young. And as a consequence of that, they have lower infant mortality rates than our selected species. Still not safe. Uh, lots of infant and baby animals do die in nature. But it's not you're literally losing 90% of the population or more that you would see if you're talking about sea turtles, where you might have only a couple from each beach surviving in any given year by the time they reach sexual maturity. Uh, sexual reproduction is characteristic of K-selected species because sexual reproduction literally takes longer because you have to have a gestational period afterwards instead of budding off a new copy of yourself. They tend to reach maturity later, but they also live longer, and they'll reproduce multiple times over that lifespan. So they can continue just making a couple babies at a time, putting lots of energy into them and making sure they survive. And then when they're ready, if they're ready, to make new ones, they can move on to doing that. And they tend to live in stable environments, which makes sense because if you're going to take a lot of time and energy to raise your offspring, you don't want them dying off to random environmental fluctuations. So again, remember, not every R-selected and not every K-selected species is going to tick off every single box in this. But in general, these are the characteristics you want to look for. And look for whichever one is more prevalent if you're trying to figure out if it's R-selected or if it's K-selected.